Hey everyone. Now I'm sure a lot of you are aware of uh, DNS, but today I'm going to talk about MDNS. And before we get started, I want you to start up Wireshark right now and start doing a specific capture. So even if you're on Windows, you can do this too. So start up Wireshark and just in your capture filter, put UDP port 5353 and just start that. And we'll come back to that later on. So MDNS is a multicast domain name service. So you might have heard of it called something like Bonjour or ZeroConf or Avahi. It's all the same sort of thing. Um, just using multicast traffic for DNS on a local network. And when I say local, I mean the link local segment. And that's, that's in the RFC for that, which I'll, I'll quickly point out. Okay, so here's the RFC for it. And as it says, it's, um, it does DNS-like stuff on the local link. And if you look at, well, in IPv4 anyway, the um, address range for multicast stuff, you see this range here for local network controller. And it says down the bottom here, when you get to it, MDNS uses 2240251. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so a simple use for it is to find another host on your network. So I've got a couple of Raspberry Pi set up here, which I'll show you and get stuck into some examples. Okay, so it's just a couple of Raspberry Pis here on the desk um, with a red and green cable, so I know which one's which, just on their own VLAN, and that's it. Okay, so on the red host here, if I just do the normal sort of DNS and try and ping the green one, nothing happens. But they are on the same layer two network. So what I can do is ping green.local and that finds it. So that pinged via um, MDNS, which I'll have a look at in the packet captures in a minute. But since it's DNS, I can do things like um, SSH to it, you know, do everything that's there really. Uh, as long as you put that dot local at the end, it's for the local link. So now I'm on the green host. And same of course, back the other way. Now, what you might notice here is I have IPv6, whereas a second ago I had IPv4. So I'll get into that now. I'll just go back to the red host. And if I look at the NS switch conf, you'll see this four in here. So when I ping green, um, dot local, it's given the four address. So I'll just go into the config and get rid of that four. So sudo vi NS switch, okay, and just, just piss the four off. Now when I ping the green one, it's giving me IPv6 addresses. So one thing that you can probably see is handy about that is for when you've got random looking IPv6 addresses where they're a bit hard to memorize, um, you can just, if it's on your local network, just ping by the uh, local name and just use MDNS. So that's one way around that. What I'll show you now is a packet capture of what's actually going on. Okay, so back on my desktop, which is a different VLAN to those Raspberry Pis, if I do something like um, ping the lounge.local, see what happens. Okay, so I'll just stop my capture. I pinged it, I got the IPv6 address back, and here's the packet capture. Now what you can see is from this machine here, now you can see the query that went out to lounge.local. This is my IPv4 address right here, and this is my IPv6, which you can see I've made very similar. So I've, I've set that up from a DHCP server to be the same sort of address, so it's, I, I memorized that. But we'll get onto the random looking ones in a little bit. So first of all, it sent out a query, and it sent it out in both IPv6, which that's the multicast destination for IPv6 MDNS, and IPv4. Now, it kind of did it twice. So <laughs> it's looking for the A record, which is um, IPv4, and it looks for that A record on both version 6 and version 4. And then, I mean, it got a response for the A record, beautiful. I told it, obviously, the IPv4 address, because it's an A record. And then I sent out a request um, for the AAAA record, which is the IPv6 record, and I sent it out in both IPv6 and IPv4. And I got a response in both IPv6 and IPv4 saying, yeah, here's the IPv6 address. So that's how it resolved it. And then I could ping it. Okay, so going back to the Raspberry Pi, if I um, SSH the green host, now I don't know its IP address, I don't need to, because I'll just do that. But if I have a look at it, see what I've got. IPv4, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. But the IPv6 one, I've set this up to be a little bit harder to follow. So you can see this part of it is really random. So I don't know what that was. I didn't know what that was. Um, I have no intention of memorizing it. So that there gives me a method to get to this host without knowing that within my local network, which is fine. So that's how you can get around your network without really knowing anything and without having a central DNS server. Okay, so that's to find the host name. But it can do a bit more than that. 
there might be different services running on, um, on these hosts around the place. So I'm going to do a demonstration here with GQRX for my software defined radio, where I have a SOAPI server. Now SOAPI is just um, a generic kind of uh, server to serve all sorts of SDR devices over the network. And when I start GQRX, you'll see what happens in the packet capture. Okay, so I'll start, actually I'll start Cubic SDR just for something different. So I've started that up, and what I've got here is it's querying the uh, remote RTL devices and the hack RF because they're on the SOAPI server. So it's come up with all these, these receivers, and it found them, I'll just stop this, by going out here. And what you can see is we have a query for SOAPI, which is, again, the name of that thing. So it went out from this computer on both addresses, and the server, which is only IPv6, responded and said, yep, okay, it's here, it's my address, blah, 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 I've got one. And now this thing here is just querying again to see if there's any more out there. But you can see now that the application knows pretty much automatically where there's a SOAPI SDR server, and I can just pick which one. And that's the same for GQRX as well. Okay, so that was an example of an application using MDNS to find a service on a network. But if you want to poke around manually, we can do that. We'll just have to install some Avahi stuff. So I'll do that now. So on the old Raspberry Pi, just do sudo apt install avahi utils. Give that a go. Okay, that's installed. Okay, so if I want to manually browse for that SOAPI server, I can just do avahi browse um, SOAPI, which is the service name, and it's TCP. And you can see that it's got a result there. Now what you can also do if you really want to find out where it is, just do dash r to resolve it. And you can see it's given my address of the, um, the server there. Another thing you can do is um, you've got your normal DNS tools here. So if I um, try and look up green, it won't know what it is, okay? Because I don't have an actual central DNS server for this VLAN. But what you can do is look for it with the name that we know, green.local, and use for the address of the DNS server, the multicast address of MDNS, uh, and use port 5353 instead of the standard 53 for normal DNS. And you can see that it comes up there with the address. So that's a way to resolve it without a centralized DNS server. Now keep in mind that's multicast. So this is just a little home network here and I don't have many things running. But if you're in a big uh, enterprise network, there might be a lot of, well, probably is a lot of that stuff floating around. So you want to trim that down because if it's not set up right, that's just going to go everywhere like a broadcast for things that you don't need. Now you might need it for a big one is um, Apple and, uh, what's it called? Um, the Apple TVs, so people can send stuff on there. When you look for it and it shows up there's an Apple TV available, that's what it used to do it. And in Apple world, it's called Bonjour. Um, here it's called Avahi. On Kodi, it's called um, ZeroConf. So on Kodi, you can browse for uh, ZeroConf stuff, and you can see some stuff comes up there, which are <laughs> then just my uh, RetroPie things, which has Samba installed. So that's where it gets those from, in case you're wondering. Now another thing to consider is Wi-Fi, because when you've got multicast frames going over Wi-Fi, if, if, if that hasn't been set up right either, they'll go out at a really low bit rate and just swamp the airwaves, so you want to trim that down. Plus you might want to restrict the services anyway. So I'll just show you uh, just briefly on an Aruba AP how you can sort of control that. Alright, so on the AP under services, you've got here a thing called Air Group and Bonjour and that, which is as I just said. So um, you've got some standard ones here, which if I click on I don't know, iTunes, you can see over here it's got the service ID, so that's what's associated with, um, with iTunes. But you can add your own as well, like, I guess Soapy wasn't on there, was it? I don't know, I didn't look. Um, so if you've got Soapy, you could then, you know, create some, some things for it, like um, Soapy and that sort of thing, and add it to there. So you can trim it down and control what user does what, so by doing that, you can say, okay, these particular users can do this and, and that can do that, but that can't. So it's a bit more controllable rather than just um, killing that port or that multicast address. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that um, MDNS because it's pretty handy, especially, as I said, for IPv6 on your local network, if you're assigning random addresses just from the router rather than a DHCP server. You don't have to even learn them. As long as you know the host name, you can just use that for, as I said, applications like SDR and that. So anyway, that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.